The Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project has urged President Muhammadu Buhari to take steps to reverse the increase in the electricity tariffs in Nigeria, which it calls unlawful, unjust, and unreasonable. We have analysis of this ahead. Yet again, an attack on a train station in Nigeria has uh, seen several persons abducted and families traumatized. We'll look at the unfolding situation uh, following the attack by gunmen on the Ekehen train station in Egwebben local government area of Edo State. And in other press, we bring you in-depth analysis of today's major newspaper headlines. Right, very good morning to you. It's a beautiful Monday morning. Great to be back on The Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartels, writing solo uh, this morning. We have interesting conversations lined up for you, and I implore you to stay with us. And uh, I uh, much needed spice and vev to your day. Now, we start with a top trending segment, which is a usual uh, starter every single morning on the breakfast. And um, we're going to something which isn't really new uh, because, I mean, it's been happening for some time. And it latest was sometime last year. But um, it's worth talking about, so we'll give it some attention. Uh, well, it's no longer news uh, that Cross River State Governor uh, Benedict Ayade, Professor Ben Ayade, we can call him, uh, presented the state's 2023 a budget proposal to the Cross River State House of Assembly um, in October last year, which was subsequently passed uh, by the House. Now, apart from the size of the budget, which is 330 billion naira, what got tongues wagging at the time last year, October? Um, I'm sure some people were even looking forward to it. Um, I also was looking forward to it as well. What got tongues wagging at the time? was the nickname given to the budget by His Excellency, the Governor of Cross River State, whom you can see on your screen right now. He nicknamed, nicknamed it uh, Budget of Quantum Infinitum. If you ever had anything like that before? <laughs> Quantum Infinitum. Now, well, there are no surprises here, no surprises at all, as um, since he became Governor in 2015, Benedict Ayade um, has been, you know, in the habit of giving his budget a very, very head-turning name. Some will call it uh, ridiculous names. His most defining legacy, some will say, has been turning his budget presentation into spectacle with the ridiculous name he gives the budget every year. Now, following this recent one, 2023 budget presented last year, October, called Budget of Quantum Infinitum, people have taken the liberty to, um, to you know, uh, go down memory lane and with some nostalgia uh, to look at what the governor has been naming his budget over the years. And uh, we'll just give you the list. I think in 2016, it was the first year Ben Ayadi uh, had the opportunity to impose his imprint on the financial and fiscal aspect of things in Cross River State. And he named the budget, Budget of Deep Vision. Budget of Deep Vision. Of course, in 2017, he had a second chance to present a budget as governor of Cross River State, and he took it a notch higher. He named it Budget of Infinite Transportation, or I think I should say Transmutation. Okay, now in 2018, Ben Ayade outdid himself. Yes, he did. He outdid himself by naming his budget Budget of Kinetic Crystallization. Hmm. And in 2019, are you ready for this? <laughs> Do you remember? If you miss it, where were you? He named the budget the budget of Quabalistic densification. I can't forget that one. In 2020, he tried to prove to everyone that his professorship is not in doubt. He tried to show you and I that he's a professor in the real sense of the world. What he named his budget the budget of Olympotic meristemesis. <laughs> you know, I feel like uh, Patrick Obanyabo right now. I don't know. <laughs> By calling all these big names. So that was in 2020. Uh, now, in 2021, what name did the governor give to his budget? 
It was titled, I mean, I, I didn't see this coming actually. It was titled, The Budget of Blush and Bliss. <laughs> the Budget of Blush and Bliss. <laughs> Quite ridiculous, you know. I mean, you, you can't make this, this stuff up. Uh, you can't make it up. Last year, last year, this penultimate budget presentation uh, to the cross River State House of Assembly, he gave them something to remember. Budget of conjugated agglutination. <laughs> budget of what? Conjugated agglutination. I've talked about this many times, but each time I have to talk about this on radio or TV, it always brings tears of laughter to my eye. Let me just wipe the one that is under. It's so funny. <laughs> budget of conjugated agglutination. And of course, for last year, we have budget of quantum infinitum. I think anyone who can remember all these names and uh, uh, can write them down should at least get a diploma, uh, you know, if not a degree, a diploma for writing them down. I mean, one could, uh, you know, be forgiven for mistaking uh, ben Ayade for to be Patrick O'Bayabo's son or, or brother or, 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 or student because the man has really almost uh, done uh, what Patrick O'Bayabo did. All right. Anyway, you know, Ben Ayade may not be remembered for many things. I mean, it's more a case in Cross of uh, uh the more you look, the less you see uh, in, in his administration has been identified or been. Uh, criticized for being offering so much in terms of promises and rhetoric but delivering so little uh, in terms of uh, action and of course results in cross over seat. How many of us remember Ben Ayade's superhighway? All right, what happened to the superhighway in cross over seat that was meant to be, you know, be the first Wi Fi uh, highway in Nigeria, you know, with, with Wi Fi? All right, what happened to that one? That project is, uh, I'm sure it's, it's, it's in the dustbin of history. Um, there's a lot in Crossover State that he's done, but of course there's a lot that we've had he'll do, really haven't seen the results. Um, I remember there's a spaghetti, spaghetti flyover. Those in, in Calabar and Crossover State will be able to relate better. And I don't know if that spaghetti flyover has been completed, but I remember going to Calabar several times. Uh, which is a city I know very well, <laughs> inside out, and seeing something at uh, uh, Odupani Junction resembling something, you know, concrete structure, and I was told it was a spaghetti flyover. Has that been completed? But for all Ben Ade may be accused of, including promising so much but delivering little, I think that uh, he will be remembered more for um, the very, very ridiculous names that he gave uh, to his budgets. I think we will remember him uh, for that. That being said, please add those words to your word bank and I'm sure you'll be better for it. <laughs> Let's move on to a next, uh, uh, but, but before that, before that, you know, I've always um, had a thing, you know, against giving names to budgets because I, I normally ask myself, why should we christen the budget? I mean, you know, <laughs> it, it's one of the things that politicians in this country do in Nigeria do, and you begin to wonder if they, they, they have a capacity to be, think creatively, to think innovatively, um, to think outside of the box, and to do things differently. Because one person says, I'm going to give my budget a name, and everybody is giving their budget names. I mean, the others may not be doing it as outrageously as Ben Ayade, or giving outlandish names as budget of blush and bliss. You know, but they give their budget names. And I'm, I, I keep asking myself, what is the big deal? Why do you need to give your budget a name? Budget of hope. Budget of uh, prosperity. Nonsense. It's not, there's nothing there. Okay, because the name that you give to your budget has nothing to do with the performance of the governor and his administration in the fiscal year. It has absolutely nothing to do with the performance of the governor and his administration in the fiscal year. You know, a lot of these state governors get away so easily with corruption, all right, with nepotism, all right, with dictatorship, because a lot of people 
are looking at the president. But if we take the books of the governors of files and open it, you realize that many of them, if they became president, <laughs> what you've seen in the past or what you've seen, you see 10 times worse. You know, so so I, I think I, I would like to join other well-meaning Nigerians to, to advise our governors. You know, forget about naming your budget. There's nothing, there's no need to name your budget. Just go ahead and give us the figures and, and do the job and, and show us the results. We're not interested in the names to give you a budget. Uh, it's something they do now. You know, since Sierra Doa, I think it was, who came up with seven-point agenda, all of a sudden everybody who is coming needs to have a uh, two-point agenda, five-point agenda, uh, six-point agenda, ten-point agenda. And must you have, why, why can't you say I'm here to do something in every area? And outline, must you name it agenda, you know? So, I mean, this, some of these guys, they don't show the capacity to, to think creatively, think out of the box. I think that is something to worry about. Because for you to be a leader, leadership is about innovation. Maybe that's what Ben Aide was trying to do. And I'll give you some credit for that. He was trying to be different, trying to stand out. But I think we have politics that borders a lot on a lot of rhetoric, a lot of showmanship, you know, a lot of um, uh, uh, higi haga, <laughs> but very little in terms of performance. And I think for me that is, that is a problem. You see leaders that are big on performance and that are, you know, little on talk, rhetoric, and um, a lot of these displays that we see around. All right. Uh, this morning I asked around the office, and I don't know you guys in the control room uh, doing your job, if you have a new narrow note. I was asking, if, can someone give me a new narrow note, please? Um, I don't know. Kai, do you have a new narrow note? Okay, you don't have you seen one before? Can anyone in the studio have a new narrow? Nobody has a new narrow note. All right, no one has a new narrow note. I went to the ATM yesterday. All right, I said I want to withdraw some amount of money, and I didn't see a single. Permit me to please take this out of my pocket. Um, I'm not trying to flaunt. I mean, this isn't much money these days, you know. But I didn't see a single. Uh, all I got was old narrow notes. Okay, I got to one of the ATMs. I got a. A 1,000 Naira, I won't tell you how much I withdrew, but it's here on the table, it's not much. Okay? And then I got to another ATM, see what I was given. See what I was given. 500 Naira. I'm telling you that as of today, I, for all my media savviness, and, you know, sit down here and talk, I haven't seen the new Naira note. One, I haven't seen it. And this morning I asked in the office, no one could give me uh, a copy, uh, uh, one, one, one note, no one. You know, nobody had it on them. So it's, it's, a, it's a worrying situation because the banks are complaining and they're saying that they don't have enough of this Naira note. Um, people are going to the bank, you know, doing over-the-counter transactions, withdrawals, and they're being given a mixture of... Uh, Old Naira and New Naira. Does someone to give me Naira note? No, okay. They do a mixture of old Naira and New Naira notes, giving them to people. And uh, for me, it's, I'm like, you know, it's, I call it assorted. <laughs> Mixing the old Naira notes and New Naira, I call it assorted. Well, what people are complaining about now, you know, is that um, uh, the ink from the new Naira note has the ability to stain your clothes, to stain, you know, stuff. Uh, and that's been the complaint from the public. People have uploaded pictures, you know, uh, posted about it on social media, complained that they realized that the Naira note, the new ones, okay, the new design Naira notes are staining their clothes. Um, I mean, the old Naira notes, I have a, a thousand Naira here, I uh, have 500 Naira here, I'm not giving it to you. Um, I know that, if, if I remember correctly, for the few times I've had to wash my clothes and I forgot to take the notes from my clothes. I don't remember the notes staining my clothes significantly. I must confess, most times it's in the jean or the trouser. But I don't remember the Naira staining the clothes significantly. Um, so, I mean, does this mean, this, this talk of uh, 
the new narrow node staining? Does it mean that it's not durable? Does it mean, aha, we see a copy on, on the screen. Does it mean that it's not durable? Does it mean that it's not, uh, it's not good enough? Well, uh, the, co the company in charge of, of, of printing the narrow notes, I mean, people came out with some fake news last year, uh, uh, you know, that the notes were being printed abroad and, and blah, blah, blah. Why aren't they printing? But we know that the Nigerian security printing and minting uh, PLC, all right, uh, is in charge of printing our Naira notes. Now, they came out to explain and we give some explanations to what people are complaining about why the new Naira notes is leaving some ink when rubbed on the plain white surfaces. And now, what they're saying is that uh, best international practice was followed in their production, is what they're saying. Best or international best practices, I think that's the way to put it, were followed in the production of the Naira notes. All right? Well, is that what we're talking about? People are saying the thing is staining their clothes and is staining white surfaces. And the, the Mint, the company known as the Mint, is saying that uh, international best practices were followed. Anyway, um, Ahmed Halilu is the managing director of the Nigerian Security uh, Printing and Minting PLC. Um, he released a statement on Friday, uh, just before the weekend, last week Friday. And he said that his attention, the attention of the, the company, had been drawn to various clips, skits, and concerns and comments on diverse platforms regarding the quality of the redesigned notes. Um, so he talked about this issue, you know, talking about um, uh, uh, the staining. And he says, quote, it is basically the same as the other notes in circulation. It is basically the same as the other notes in circulation. All right, that's what he said. Um, he also said is, however, uh, in addition, the second stage of the currency printing requires a heavy deposit of special inks with fairly large particles to give a tactile feeling of the portraits as well as uh, other raised prints by way of design. I don't know if you understand uh, what he's saying. That's what he's saying. It's a lot of technical you know, jargon there. Um, but if you look at the narrow notes, you know, the new ones. They're generally light when issued. And he says that they will become heavier in circulation on getting, you know, moisture on it, on getting dirt on it. And that's why you have some of these things, the lighter nature of the note and then the ink that is going off. Well, he also wanted to say that um, uh, this, this, you know, one of the properties of this uh, intaglio ink, as he called it, is non-solubility in water. All right, and ease of transfer uh, on plain white materials owing to the size of the particles. He says this is generally a security feature of all banknotes that easily differentiates them from forged or counterfeit notes. So uh, I guess what this, the, the minting uh, PLC or the mint is saying that is that uh, uh, people have nothing to fear even if you um, see or rub the new narrow notes on a, a white surface and see it uh, you know, staining the surface, it means that it is actually the authentic one. Um, I have never seen this in my life before. I mean, we all have had fresh Naira notes. I mean, is it 500 Naira? All right, these ones aren't too new, okay? But is it, is it 500 Naira or 500 Naira or 1,000 Naira? We've, had, we've all had the opportunity to have fresh notes, either from the ATM or somebody just wants to give you a bundle or you do business, you get paid. You know, I've gotten sprayed before, and, you know, and they never rubbed. Never, never. All right? Like Governor Wiki said some time ago, never, never. It never got rubbed on. So, I mean, if you say it's normal, well, we're not the professionals. We, we don't know about these things. They're the ones who know. But what we know, okay, what we know is that these notes, 200, 100, 1,500, never rubbed off any ink or stain any white surfaces when they were new. Okay? So, what is he talking about? Like I said, he's a professional. We're all in this thing together. Let's see where this goes. Now, the next uh, a, a trending story, um, people have been talking about this, and uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria 
issuing further directives, fresh directives uh, regarding its cash withdrawal policy. All right. Um, <laughs> and this time, the Central Bank of Nigeria has ordered uh, deposit money banks not to pay customers making over-the-counter withdrawals of new Naira notes again. All right, that's what they're saying. Don't give them the new Naira notes over-the-counter. Now, what the Apex Bank is directing the banks to do is to instead uh, load their automated teller machines or ATMs with only the new notes to ensure that the currency circulates across the nation ahead of the January 31, 2023 deadline when the old notes would no longer uh, be legal tender. All right. So according to reports, the Central Bank of Nigeria issued directive, the directive uh, on Wednesday, last week Wednesday, and ordered the implementation to begin immediately. So what this means is that if you go to the bank do over-the-counter withdrawals, you will not be given the new notes. So does it mean you're going to be given old notes? And they want the banks to instead load the new notes into the ATM. So the banks have been... Complain they don't have enough of these new notes. So what are they going to do? You know, as of Friday, according to a report I saw, as of Friday, the banks have not been able to comply with the directive as they complain of inadequate supply uh, of the new notes, you know, prompting them to load their ATMs to the old notes. Yesterday, I went to the ATM. I was drawing a thousand naira from the ATM. I saw somebody from my left who was drawing 500 naira. I asked him, you know, out of, you know, curiosity, if the machine was giving him uh, only 500 Naira notes, he says, yes, that machine was giving only 500 Naira notes. But they were old Naira notes. You know, so something is not right here. CBN on one hand is telling the deficit money banks to load only uh, new Naira notes into the ATMs. Deficit money banks are saying, we don't have enough of the new Naira notes. So what is going on? Where, where's the money? Where's the money? You know, so it's a lot that isn't, isn't, isn't clear. And you know what? The inconsistency with the Central Bank of Nigeria, as far as this cash withdrawal policy is concerned, is sickening. It is worrying. It is dangerous. It portends only bad things for the Nigerian economy. Okay, I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom. But I mean, it doesn't take the, you know, the most brilliant economic mind to know that policy inconsistencies send a wrong signal. All right, you came up by saying that X Y Z amount of money was a cash withdrawal limit, you know, per week for individuals and for corporate organizations, and then there was a lot of reaction and people were shouting, POS operators, the National Assembly, and then he said, oh, oh, okay, we're going to change it. Now you can withdraw 500,000 Naira per week. Or 1 million Naira, or is it 5 million Naira per week? Change of policy. Or what you call policy somersault. Now, all of a sudden from nowhere, after giving directions and guidelines on how you know, this uh, cash withdrawal policy should be carried out, all of a sudden you are telling banks not to give people new Naira notes over the counter. Rather give them only through the ATMs. You know, we need to see some consistency, some direction, all right, and some resolution from the CBN. You know, if you're going to think about these things, think about them, give the scenarios from the get-go so that people don't get confused. At the end of the day, of course, um, the banks are saying they don't have these money, so what can the CBN say to this? Anyway, we, we have to go at this point, and uh, hopefully um, we'll see some improvements, okay, in the situation. Um, we have a January 31 deadline. People have taken their monies back to the banks while doing so. Um, will people be able to get their hands on the new Naira notes? My prediction is that beyond January 31, Nigerians are going to continue using the old notes. Why? Because some people may not be able to tell the difference. Okay, some people, especially in rural areas, are going to say, Oh, they look familiar. The new ones are fake, they'll reject it. Let's see how it goes. My name is Kofi Bartels. We're back on the other side. Open our boy Kutare standing by as we go through the papers and, of course, with analysis to follow. <laughs>